Hi everybody out there. I uh, thought it was about time I did an update video. I'm not too sure where I should be looking, but I can be looking in my uh, uh, camera. Should I be looking up there? Where I'm looking? I'll look up there anyway. I can't see diddly squat without my glasses on. Mm. Um, so I thought I'd do an update video uh, where I'm at health-wise um, because I'm at that point where no, okay, let me start off. I am now going to be doing these update videos for myself as a, a bit of a record as to how things are developing in my life now um, with this cancer situation going on. Um, I appreciate you all coming along. I appreciate your love and support and prayers and... Um, all your kind wishes and all that sort of stuff. Um, but this now has become a personal record of where I'm at for me. And you're along with me um, because I'm at that stage and I'm thinking, well, I'm classed as terminal, okay? And keep filling out forms with terminal on it and that doesn't make you feel too good anyway. As some of you are aware, I have done, um, I've been through a bit of a journey with my um, now stage 4 lung cancer. And yeah, my forms now are, like I said, terminal um, on the heading. And I'm at that point, and I'm also doing this one as an update because of how I'm feeling mentally. Okay, let me start. Uh, yesterday I went and had my latest scan done and the, went to the doctor a couple hours afterwards to get the results of the scan. The results of the scan, I'm happy to say, are they're still the same. There's a couple of um, new nodules that he saw that um, he discussed but in general, it's pretty much the same. It's at a standstill right now. It's not gone, but it's at a standstill. I should have been really happy coming out of there yesterday, um, but all I wanted to do when I got home yesterday afternoon was just shut out the world, just go and hide in my bedroom and just cry and cry and cry because not because of the good news, that, that would be absolutely craziness, but because I, at this stage of where things are at, I feel more of a burden now that things are leveled out at the moment. It could be a time when it decides it's going to start doing something again. We'll worry about that down the track. But because uh, it's um, leveled out, I feel like I'm a burden. I, since last November, um, because my oncologist and doctor uh, suggested it that I go on to disability support pension here in Australia. I don't know what it's called over there, but it's still um, um, disability. You know what I mean. So I started the process um, for a claim last November and it has been a nightmare. I have filled out every form possible, then they want another form because it's not enough even though they say it is originally. Then you have to fill out another form because that's not enough because you need another one, this and that and that and this and that. I've got no money. Since November, I, okay, um, last year I, when it looked like my cancer was on the move with all the new um, spots in my um, good lung, I took out some money of my superannuation. I thought, if it's going to be moving that fast, I've got Barbara, anybody knows um, the story about Barbara and my um, ca caravan that I've been restoring. It, it became a massive um, 
job to get it finished before I thought I was, and I did. I seriously thought I was going to um, get sick um, the way it came on so quickly. And it was a, um, a rush. That's all I kept thinking of. Oh my God, I'm going to die and I've got this piece of junk sitting in the driveway that is going to be worthless. Anyway, so I took out some money. I thought, well, take out some money. I can use that to um, restore um, um, Barbara. I think I said Doris before, sorry. Uh, to restore um, Barbara. I can now go away on my little road trips and not worry about, oh, have I got money? And uh, it, it was something to make me feel a bit better about not mooching on everybody and not being so scared and prostate. The... It was disabling me, like, and it still is, to the point where I don't feel I can do, I can do anything. Um, the feeling in my gut is absolutely disgusting because of my financial situation. My car broke down. Anyway, sent, um, Centrelink, which um, what it's called over here to see about the disability, it's been an ongoing process. I have rung, I have rung, I have rung, I have spoken, I've gone in, I've done um, this, I've um, done that, I've done that. Not getting anywhere, it's I uh, have to go through the process. Why when people, I don't understand it, and there's a friend of mine on Facebook, um, she just recently, her daughter died, and she's still um, having trouble with Centrelink, um, even though her daughter's died, and they're giving her a really hard time. Go figure. So, I, um, I, why did they make it so hard when your class is terminal? Mm, great little terminology. It makes me every time I um, say it. Um, when your class is terminal, and they've got all um, the info, they've got all the records, they've got everything there. Why do they make it so hard? I have not been so stressed out. And I can't remember when. I just feel physically sick to my stomach. No money coming in. Nothing. I've got bills I'm um, piling up that I can't pay because I've got no money coming in. Um, um, and people might say, "Well, oh, you've um, got your foster child." No, he's um, turned 18 and money's gone um, there. So uh, th th there's not even that to fall back on if I wanted to why they have to make it so hard to, uh, for anybody that's um, classed as terminal to make it so horrendous. I'm extremely lucky that my cancer deci has decided to level out for the time being and I feel okay. Um, but if I had been going through my chemo or had if the cancer had to come on worse or if any um, all that sort of um, going on where I was at basically death's door, let's not muck around, um, having to try and go through the process would have been hell on earth, it's bad enough now, I'm sweaty palms just um, talking about it, I'm not getting anywhere, I've got no money, my car broke down a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and it wasn't just a, a small little breakdown, oh you need a new spark plug, no, <laughs> it just happened to be, Oh, I'd say a little, I think it might have been been a year, um, the gearbox went. Cost me three and a half thousand dollars. Fine, we got that fixed. The head gasket's gone this time. Lovely. What are we looking at? Four and a half thousand dollars. I got no money. Thank God I've got a little bit of that money left that I took out for the caravan, so that's all my caravan money gone. So I need to get new wheels, not tyres, I need to get new wheel hubs and stuff because it's so bad. And so I've finished Barbara basically everything else, but now she's just sitting there like a white elephant in the driveway 
I've got no money to get those tyres so that I can get her out weighed and get her out registered and past inspection and all that. I've got no, I've got none. Because the car's going to take all that money. I suppose I should be grateful that yes, I had that money, but now I've got no, no money. Uh, so, I don't know what to do. I... getting back to feeling a burden with stuff I am not paying any bills I have no money to contribute um, with anything it's putting a strain on relationships here that um, don't need to um, have a um, strain be, be put on them because it's causing even more stress I'm at a point now where I don't feel I can go to the supermarket and buy something for five dollars that might be needed because I'm too scared I'm too scared to do anything I'm with feeling like a burden and it sounds extreme but you have to be in that situation I now want to There's thoughts of me packing my car, which I don't have because it's bust. Packing my car up, disappearing, supposedly on a road trip, taking my pills with me, and finding a nice quiet place and just out in, outing this world because I feel it would be so much easier for everybody else that's um, now left to basically support me and because when I die there's all this money when I die right now I'm a burden on everybody I know I'm talking around in circles I know some people are saying that's rubbish um, all that sort of stuff I understand all that I totally understand all that but all that stuff is keeps going through my mind like why don't I just go and do it everybody's going to be so much better off I shouldn't have to um, think like that I hope I'm looking in the right place so I can uh, be talking to if I'm not I'm sorry I'm trying to um, it's awful it's absolutely awful I don't know when it, uh, um, it's going to end I don't know when I'm going to have money I don't know what else to do. Um, it looks like I'm going to have to sell Doris. If anybody knows um, Doris, it looks like I'm going to have to sell Doris to um, try and pay some of the bills because you still get your, um, your um, bills come in and if I'm not contributing then um, things get behind and everything gets in a big horrible mess and it's just a domino effect and why if you've got terminal written all over your paperwork to get some sort of um, support in your last time um, that you've got left on this earth why do I have to make it so horrendous for everybody I'd hate to think somebody um, like I said that we a lot sicker than me and there are trying to go through the process um, I'd hate to think what they're ha um, going through and doesn't surprise me that there are people that have left this world because they thought it was um, going to be a far easier option for them that's where I'm at with my head I don't know what to do I just don't know what to do sell Doris then then I can get Barbara finished sell her off doesn't really much matter does it um, because I can't take it with me and the end result is I'm out of here because of this lung cancer anyway I'm just lucky that it's plateaued I'm stuck and like I said this is just a record for me to see because my brain it just won't stop it just won't stop 
I feel like it's just gonna sort of it's just gonna sort of pop out the top of my head and uh, I'll get there I know I'll get there I've done all my counseling done a counseling course so I know all the, um, the key words that I should be using myself you do every um, single time <sighs> And even to the point where Ralphie, who's sitting a little blessing, who's not and here he is, my little man, decided to rip a dew claw off. Last last week, I think. Yeah, last week. Decided to rip a dew claw off while he was playing with Ralph. Hmm. Good. Lovely. And at a point where I'm seeing him, and there's, uh, he wouldn't let me um, go anywhere near it because he's um, favouring it and wanted to bite me and all that sort of stuff. I couldn't go um, uh, take him to the vet to have his juke claw um, looked at. It cost me 200 bucks, so there's another $200 bang just gone. Like, uh. <laughs> it makes me sick every time I talk about money at the moment. That's where I'm at with my health. Yay, it's stable. Mentally, I'm an absolute wreck. Oh, God. This too shall pass, as they say. I feel like I'm sinking further and further down the lounge. This too shall pass, as they say. I should put the horns beyond my head. Make me a warrior. It'll all come out in the wash eventually. Will I go and on a road trip and top myself? No, don't worry about that. It's in my head, and it's not right. The situations like this should make it be in your head, really. At least my tattoo looks nice in this video. Well, it does through my blurry eyes, I don't know what it is, almost a straight line there, alright, um, I don't know what else to say, I don't know what else to do, um, like I said, Barbara is now, uh, not now uh, very expensive, because I've spent a little bit of money on her, white elephant sitting in the driveway, sell Doris, um, to pay to get her finished, I suppose, what you got to do, that's what you got to do. So, uh, people have been asking, some very nice people on Instagram have been uh, um, DMing me, um, and I appreciate it very, very much. I tend to go quiet a bit um, when um, I'm in a situation like this um, because I don't feel I want everybody to know about how, where my, how I am. So don't think that my because my messages um, responses back to you might be um, short and sort of direct and all that sort of stuff. It's got nothing to do with you. It's all to do with me and where my head is at the moment. So I do hope you understand. I look like shit. <sighs> I wish I had rich friends. I do. I wish I had rich friends that could just say, here you go, use it as a, um, I'll use it as a tax write-off here, it'll get you out of trouble. But I don't. <laughs> oh, I should have. I should have had rich friends. Try and um, start up a, gum, a GoFundMe page. Mm, I tried to do that uh, for Dylan once. Um to try and see about getting a new pool for him um, but that just went nowhere because it just went nowhere and I feel funny um, you ask for um, money which I have in the past I feel like you're scabbing off people I'll be right 
I'll cut this off here. It's 20 minutes. I've let you know. There you go. That's where I'm at. It's all in the head right now. This, now, these now updates are going to be become my personal record because no doubt the cancer is going to start moving again. It's going to happen. And I'll just keep a record as to where I'm at um, as my progress. Not deteriorating. Oh, that sounds harsh, doesn't it? As material as things develop. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. <laughs> I feel sick. I feel sick. I'm sweaty. I don't feel even cleaning. I feel so debilitated. Oh, that's the right word. Um, the I can't do anything. I can't focus on anything. I'll, I try and do it. I go off to do something else. Then I feel really bad. Then I feel like I have to sit down because, oh my God, I can't deal with this anymore. Thank you very much for watching. You all wanted an update. You got one. At least I'm happy with my tattoo. That's, that's something. Bye. I'm rambling now. See you later. I'll see you the next update, eh? See where my brain's at. Thank you.